Hello everybody, my name is Skythe, and today we're covering the second wave of DLC for the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass, The Crown Tundra. Let's see if this expansion is expansive enough to expand on the content that really needed expanding. Again. The Crown Tundra, as I just said, is the second and most likely final wave of DLC for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. This time, instead of taking place in a much more tropical climate, this one takes place in the frigid cold areas just below the Gala region, and is much bigger than the Isle of Armour. This wave of DLC sees you traversing through the Crown Tundra on three missions, each contained inside their own storyline, and each one is decently long. The primary quest involves you hunting down the legendary Pokemon Calrex and attempting to reunite it with one of its long lost steeds, and by extension restore faith in the townsfolk who live near Calrex's shrine. This is probably my favourite of the three storylines, as it's really well done. Calrex has quite a lot of personality for only being a Pokemon, and the way he communicates with you is by possessing Pion, or as he calls it, borrowing his body. Blech. Anyways, in order for Calrex to regain its strength, you have to reunite it with one of its two steeds, and much like with Kubfu in the Isle of Armour, you can choose which steed Calrex rides, either the Ice-type Glacier or the Ghost-type Spectria. And then, at the end of the storyline, you are thankfully able to reunite the two and then battle and capture Calrex. This storyline is a really cool one to go through, and rewards you with a very cool Pokemon at the end of it. Calrex in its united form combines both the abilities of its steed and Calrex itself, and also has the signature move of the Pokemon it's riding. It's a very cool Pokemon, and I really like it a lot. Also, just one more thing before we continue, obviously you can only get one form of Calrex per save file, however it is possible to use multiple save files on your Switch to get both forms and then transfer one or the other between Pokemon Home. This also goes for another pair of Pokemon that we'll get to later in the video. This storyline isn't too long, and in fact only takes around an hour or two if you know what you're doing, but is definitely an enjoyable experience. Now let's move on to the longest of the three missions, and that is hunting down the legendary Galarian trio, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Heading up to this tree will begin a really cool cutscene that is one of the greatest animated cutscenes in the entire Pokemon franchise, where the three legendary birds will battle it out for some fruit on this huge tree, and after they spot you they will all flee to separate corners of the Gala region. And now you have a chance to catch them, with each one roaming to a different area around the map. Zapdos flees to the main game's wild area, Moltres heads up to the Isle of Armour, and Articuno stays on the Crown Tundra. I really like these designs, especially Zapdos and Moltres. They look really well done, and are probably some of my favourite designs added to Generation 8 so far. And finally we have the third and final mission, and that is hunting down the Regis. Reggie Rock, Regice, Reggie Steel, and the two new ones, Reggie Drago and Reggie Lecky. Surrounding the Crown Tundra are four temples, each of which housing one of the five Regis and each one has a required barrier that must be passed in order to open them. And once you do, you'll be able to challenge and hopefully catch one of the Regis. Now here is where your second choice in the Crown Tundra must be made. Much like with Calrex, you can only choose one Regie out of the two new ones, as both of them are housed in the same temple. By completing the pattern on the floor in a certain way, you'll lock yourself into fighting one of the two new Regis, either the Electric-type Regie Lecky or the Dragon-type Regie Drago. These two are very well designed and can actually be shiny hunted, which is a very nice touch. In fact, all the Regis can be shiny hunted. This machine is probably the least important out of the three, but is required to unlock one of the two new features in this DLC. That being the Star Tournament. After you become champion in the main game, clear the Isle of Armor story and all three side stories in the Crown Tundra, you will be invited by Leon to join the Gala Star Tournament, which is basically the league battle but in doubles. And these things can be brutal at times. This is a really nice challenge, and what's better, you can team up with a pretty large cast of characters, which also means you can get some fun duos to face. This is easily the hardest challenge in the entire game, and is definitely worth a shot if you want to put your skills to the test. But by far, my favourite mode in the entire DLC is the Dynamax Adventures. At the start of the Crown Tundra, these are introduced to you through a small part in the story before it splits off into its three separate paths, and these can be attempted by you and up to three of your friends. You're given a choice of three random Pokemon and have to make your way through several Dynamax battles towards the end of a cave, where you can face off against a ton of legendary Pokemon and even catch them. And if you catch one of the other Pokemon along the way, then you can swap it out for your current rental Pokemon and continue on your way. There are also several helpful characters or item pickups along the way that can really give you that edge in the next battle. This game mode is pretty fun whilst playing alone, but with friends this becomes a strategic uphill battle that could change on a whim and is definitely the best part of the DLC, and is something I will be doing very often. 
Alongside all of this, there are a ton of returning Pokemon finally making it into the Gala region, leaving only around 100 left locked out of Sword and Shield entirely. Although, on the bright side of things, a lot of these missing Pokemon can be caught or originated in the Sinnoh region. So who knows, we could finally be getting those Sinnoh remakes, and this is just Game Freak's solid way of telling us. However, I do have a few issues with the Crown Tundra DLC that I want to discuss, because much like the Isle of Armor, this update is by no means perfect. First, and most frustrating of all, shiny locking the new legendaries. Now I did say earlier that both Regilecki and Regidrago, the two new Regi forms, can be shiny hunted, but the ones that can't being both forms of Calrex and the three birds are super frustrating to me. Mainly because I may or may not have an addiction to hunting these sparkly boys to add to my ever-growing collection. I'm sure much like with the Gen 7 legendaries, they will be eventually released later down the line, but that just begs the question of why shiny lock them in the first place. If people such as myself want to spend time hunting these birds, or even Calrex for a shiny one, then why can't we? There is literally no reason. And this time, Game Freak has no excuse because as I just said, the new Regis aren't shiny locked. It just baffles me that these beautiful mons are just sat there out of reach and I will never be able to hunt one of them down. But aside from that, another thing about these legendaries that gets under my skin is that they are so damn stubborn. Certain ones like Riku the Zapdos here, I was able to hold down with an Ultra Ball or two, but Articuno took almost 20 minutes of non-stop ball launching until I finally, finally caught it. Same goes for Reggie Rock too. I understand that their catch rates are low and that they're legendaries for a reason, but my god, when I can catch Calrex with a single ball without damaging it, but then 5 minutes later I'm stuck in a cave hurling ball after ball after ball at a moving slab of stone that just doesn't feel like being caught, you can see why that would annoy me. Granted, I get that people may enjoy this, but for me, personally, it's a tad annoying. The only other thing I'm not a fan of in this update relates to the Dynamax adventures I was praising earlier. They somehow managed to mess up the party search system so badly that we had to reset the search several times just to get one run going. And the thing that disappoints me about this is they already have a decent search system for the regular raid battles. You just walk up, input a code if you need to, and bam, that's a lobby right there, and people can join whenever they want. But with these, there doesn't seem to be that specific lobby. We could all put in the same code and the game still won't guarantee us a match. Sometimes it might match three of us and leave one stranded, sometimes it might not match any of us, and sometimes it will work perfectly. I don't see why they couldn't have just already used the decent system they have in place for literally every other form of local or online communication. Just please go back to the PSS Game Freak, I'm begging you. That thing was so quick and easy and you just had to tamper with it, didn't you? And that's everything I wanted to cover on this DLC update. And honestly, this one was way more fun to go through than the Isle of Armor was. Having a much more expansive world and a lot more stuff to do, this one actually feels like endgame content, rather than a side quest like the first wave. Obviously, it has its issues and most definitely is not perfect. But does this second update make the DLC package worthwhile overall? Honestly, I have to give the same answer as last time here. It all depends on how much more time you'd like to spend in these games. I definitely say this wave has much more value than the first one and brings way more content to the table, but if you didn't enjoy Sword and Shield, there may not be anything for you here. It all depends on taste, really. I, however, had a really good time with this update and it was really fun to play through. Personally, I think it was even better the second time through on my alt account, because I noticed more of the finer details rather than just focusing on the story. So overall, I'm going to give the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC Wave 2 Expansion Pass, aka the Crown Tundra, Four and a half Pokeballs out of five. And that is going to bring us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it even a little bit, please be sure to leave a like on it, comment any thoughts about the DLC in the comments below, and if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome, and second, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell too. If you want to help the channel grow, the best way to currently do that would be to share the video with a friend. Lastly, if you want to see more of me on other social media platforms, then be sure to head down into the description below and follow the links there to either join my Discord server or head over to Twitter and leave me a follow over there too. If you want video updates or just generally want to see what I'm up to, then those are some of the best places to do it. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, stay safe my Chaos Crew, peace.